And Iowa will move from right to left here in the opening period. They've got the puck in their own zone. As we're underway, Griffin steal it. They walk right in front and score! What a passing play! Callahan to Pumpkin and Neely and 14 seconds in. The Griffins strike early and lead it one to nothing. An electrifying player, Andreas after the CU. Now look out in the wild score. Tyler Grayovac takes a pass in the left wing circle and rims a wrister past the catching glove of Tom McCullum. Well, you can see Schrader knew he had Timu the forward back, and he took it to him in his case. Said, right in front for a good chance. There's another. Right in front, score! Memphis feeds it across to Ferraro. Backdoor play, and a pretty one it was. And that's two beauties now there for Grand Rapids. Scroll back to the right point area. Has a little room now. There's a pass across, score! <laughs> Timu poking it, and another backdoor play. And the Griffins are exposing a potential weakness of the Iowa Wild here, Larry. That one was a mistake. Just page pacing way off the mark to Sproul. And... Now look out. Oh. Right in front, score! <laughs> Can you believe that, Larry? They just threw it at the net, and it went off the leg. And or the skate of Mitch Callahan, and the Griffins get a power play goal. But the Griffins come up with the puck, and here's Tiverden. He had a man ahead of him, Ferraro, instead dropped for Nosek. Tomas Nosek, he's going to angle right in front and score! Boy, he made it look easy, didn't he? Tomas Nosek makes it 5 to 1. 4 42 into the second period. Now back in they go. Porter's cutting right in. Drop pass, they walk right front to Burton, score! 6 to 1. It's a clinic here at that end of the arena. Oh my goodness, Kevin Porter, boy, he made a great move. Griffin's on the move, here's Polkin in the right wing. Shot blocked, got it right back, dropped it off in front, Pink oh. shot, score! Nathan Pink makes it seven to one, and a great pass from Polkin in, who will pick up his fourth point of the night. Across that line, he's gonna walk in with a shot, and hitting their right toe on that was Gustafson. Rebounded along the line, held in by Nosek, he walks into the circle, that's a go, yeah. that's, that's in, that's a goal. Sure enough, it looked like it might have hit the post, and Something softer, which obviously would be the netting, Larry. And yeah, yeah, of course. Hey. Hogan now right in front uh, of his score. Centering pass to Colin Campbell, and he taps it pass. Dave DeSander. Now he's going after Anthony Mantha. And I'll tell you, this could spark some real issues here. Now we got all heck breaking loose. Everybody grabbing onto one another. And out of the pile up comes Mantha and Bulmer. Right in front of the benches across the way. They're just grabbing onto one another right now. Now Bummer gets free through a right around the back of the head of Mantha. And I'll tell you, Callahan and Evans want to get on the ice right now in the worst way. Well, Gogol's the guy who started it all, and he went out, gave a pretty good pop. To, I think it was Louis Mark Aubrey, and then after Mantha as well. And that didn't turn to have anything to do with him, and obviously ended up in a bit of a scrum. His gloves never came off. So I, I don't know, maybe this is a five and a two. As the Wild bust up ice and across the line, Schrader left wing is shot, McCullum the save oh, and the nice. rebound. Was loose for Schrader, now they get it back too many scores. Jordan Schrader will score the power play goal and make it nine to two with 46 seconds remaining in the hockey game. And that's going to do it, a lopsided and decisive nine to two win for the Griffins here over the Iowa Wild. It's a pretty good game, like we win 9-2 on, so everybody's happy. What about the energy? It's pretty good after Christmas break. I think it's pretty good energy in the game. And we got the two points that we need. Yeah. Now, last week you guys won 7-1 against Toronto. Do you think last week from, you know, did you carry that energy over from last week to today? I don't know, we got a couple, we got a, like three days off, so we got recovery, so we come back and we show good energy. Describe uh, what the feeling is like scoring your first goal. Uh, it's pretty good. I'm happy, like I score, four, I play four games, so I score, so it's pretty, pretty excited feeling. Oh, 
we had a good night for sure. Uh, we played with uh, all four lines and uh, everybody scored goals, so it was perfect. Speaking of your uh, all four lines, but I think initially tonight your line really set the tone to kind of start the game off. Uh, I don't know. Like uh, I think every every four line pl uh, played great, so uh, it's good for the guys to get the confidence up. Uh, for sure, our, our line played good too, so uh, it was uh, it was a team a team win for sure. Well, I thought they they were a little bit short handed there, but I thought we did a we did a good job. I liked our game for the most part. The first period, I thought there were some chances back and forth, and I thought Tom did Tommy did a real good job of uh, uh, not giving him momentum once we scored. Um, he did that throughout the game, so good for Tommy. I thought he looked on top of his game, and then I you know we we were able to make some some pretty good offensive plays that to create goals and. Uh, they had lost their goalie before the game, so they were in a tough spot there where they had the emergency backup, but uh, I was happy with our effort. Well, the one thing that we've seemed to have uh, a little bit here lately is uh, depth of scoring. It, it seems like we have multiple lines that can score, and I think anytime you have depth of scoring, it it eases the uh, the pressure on just one line, and, um, and, and it makes you it gives you a chance to have a real good hockey team. I've been saying for a while I think we have a chance to be a real good hockey team here, but we got to continue to go out and prove it. Um, you know, we're still in our minds uh, based on our segments and points we've get, get garnered so far. We're not a playoff team yet, so we got to still find a way to become a playoff team, and um, we're going to have to continue to put real good efforts back to back to back, and uh, hopefully uh, we can have another good one on Tuesday on the road. Speaking of your depth of scoring, I think it was tonight you guys only had two skaters that didn't score a point tonight, which is pretty remarkable. Yeah, you know, I, I think it is, and, and obviously in, when you score nine, lots of guys are going to have different uh, different point totals, but um, I, I thought lots of different guys made plays. I, I do feel like we have uh, three lines that can go out and are real offensive, and then a fourth line that can go out and really grind the other team and, and create offense in a different way, and they've done a real good job with that. So. Again, I think when you have that type of depth of scoring, you have that type of uh, depth up front, uh, you can do some good things. I think the biggest thing is we've really learned how to be a, a, a good two-way team, defensive team, and that gives you your offense. Mm -hmm. But seeing that they brought in a Grand Rapids goalie to come in and play, the interesting thing is, is uh, Tommy couldn't practice with us last night, so he practiced with us last night. So um, uh, he's, he was somebody we brought in to uh, be in that situation. And I think when they called, what happens sometimes when you need an emergency backup, you call the home team. I think they talked to our uh, equipment manager, Brad Thompson, and uh, Brad gave him the number. And he's a very capable guy who can come in and obviously came in a tough situation in the third there. So um, I thought he might be too tired from the night before, but he found a way to, to have lots of energy there in the third.